How's it guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing vasopressors. So there's an, a range of presses and I obviously can't cover them all in a 5 to 10 minute video but we're going to be tackling adrenaline, noradrenaline, phenylephrine and dopamine. So let's simplify this because there is just so many factors to consider and the evidence is actually quite lacking. You will be quite surprised that there is little evidence to say that one is better than the other and there's even less evidence to say that it's actually the best thing to do anyway. So let's jump straight in. To understand presses, you just need to understand the A receptors and the B receptors and all that thing. So quick breakdown. So A, nice way to remember what it means is for arteries. So A1 is going to constrict your smooth muscle and A2 is going to constrict your arteries, your major arteries. So that's why we have things like phenol, which are just artery constrictors. B1, which is your, which stands for the heart um, or bercardio, which is your inotrope, chronotrope, and dromotrope. So B2 is obviously your bronchial dilator. The way I remember it is that we always have two lungs. So B2, that's what I use, that's bronchial dilation. And then B3 is fat loss and bladder control loss. We'll get into that maybe later. So adrenaline is more on your heart, puts more pressure on the heart and less on vasoconstriction and norepinephrine or noradrenaline and puts more on the constriction and less on the heart. It's kind of the balance of the two. So if you have someone who is in septic shock, the recommendation is norepinephrine because there's nothing really wrong with the heart. It's more of a vaso dilatory vasodilatory effect of the sepsis that makes the, the vasodilation so we want vasoconstriction but we also want the heart to pump a little bit so epinephrine or adrenaline wherever you're from is lots of a and then a little bit of b where norepinephrine is more B and just a little bit of A. So when I say B, I mean beta, and when I say A, I mean alpha. Then we come to phenylephrine. So phenylephrine is just a presser. So it's just A, just your arteries are being constricted. This is something that we're gonna use in trauma if there's been massive blood loss and now we're trying to keep a blood pressure and not make the heart pump any harder, phenol would be your go-to. But there have been some trials, all right? So I found a trial where they compared they, they took pigs as they do and made them bleed. The one group of pigs they gave phenol, the other group of pigs they waited and then they gave them fluid, and then the third group of pigs they just gave ringers lactate. More pigs survived with phenol but had brain damage. Less pigs survived with the ringers lactate but less had brain damage. So this kind of disproved that phenol is really gonna make a difference. It's just gonna constrict all the vessels in your brain and that's gonna make your brain die. Oh, brains need blood. So that's pretty much phenol. And then when it comes to the one who we're going to talk about is dopamine, it really should be used in a zombie apocalypse because it's terrible. Let's not even go there. But to summarize, it's dose dependent. If you give a low dose, it causes vasodilation, sometimes depending. And then if you give a high dose, it causes vasoconstriction, sometimes depending. So it really is not the best drug to be using and I don't know what kind of circumstance you'd want to use it only if it's your last available thing. They've done studies on patients who are in um, a hypervolemic shock and they have assessed their levels of adrenaline, noradrenaline and dopamine and when they are in shock there is elevated adrenaline, elevated noradrenaline but there is no elevation in dopamine in patients who are in shock which probably points to the fact that we shouldn't really be giving them more dopamine because the body doesn't use it because the body, the body can create dopamine or release dopamine. We really shouldn't be giving a patient more dopamine if in that state they don't even create it themselves. So just keep that in mind. The best advice I could give you is that choose one of these drugs and know it well. And by meaning know, know it well, know what dose you're gonna use for what and where. Because generally speaking, when you look at the evidence for presses or inotropes it really is very limited and a lot of it has been done on pigs and other sorts of animals very little is actually really good evidence on humans have a look for yourself i'll drop a bunch of links below when they're comparing 
noradrenaline to um, adrenaline for sepsis or if they're looking at the effect of noradrenaline in trauma or hypertension there really is limited evidence and so in cardiac arrest you'd say oh we give adrenaline in cardiac arrest well there is no evidence to say that it has any benefit and in fact there is evidence to say the patients who got adrenaline in cardiac arrest had a worse outcome at 30 days post cardiac arrest so it didn't even increase survival out of hospital all it did is that it increased the chances of ROSC so I mean there might be some bias there might be some other confounders as in like only the really sick people got more adrenaline but long story short they they tried to waver around those confounders and so that is not really a problem in that study to sum it up there are multiple kinds of presses if you understand your alpha receptors and your beta receptors and you understand what's wrong with the patient if they have a heart problem or a constriction problem you can then choose the right drug depending on what you have my recommendation is to be comfortable with the one you have if you only have adrenaline be comfortable with adrenaline don't worry about noradrenaline or phenol or dopamine just focus on what you have there is a lot of evidence to say that there is little evidence that supports the use of presses or inotropes in a lot of situations and it's kind of just what we do because it's what we've been doing and it kind of makes the problem better now but there's little evidence of 30 days 60 90 days after hospital um, admission for survival out of hospital i'll drop all these links below there'll be a lot of links at the bottom i'd love for you to read them and see them please guys if you have any other ideas or things that would be interesting to talk about or to discuss about presses or inotropes would love to know what drugs you have and wherever you're working i'd love to know what you guys are are equipped with we have phenol we have adrenaline and we have noradrenaline we're very lucky but i'd love to know what you guys have and to all of you thanks for watching and have a great day bye for now